I want to welcome everybody here today. We've got a we've got a brief introduction of another not a silver bullet, but a bullet, something a tool in our toolkit for gravel preservation. We had a lot of miles out of the hundred thousand miles of, of roadway network. We've got about sixty thousand, and we can do better. We can do more. We can do better for the health of of our of our customers, the health of the people living along the road, the health for our products, our grain our egg commodities, we can do better for the for the cattle that are along the roadways. We can do better reducing dust, stabilizing the road, preserving the gravel, the limited resource that we have. And so let's try to figure out another tool that might work in our state. So today, Dustin Almer is with UGPTI. Dustin, thank you so much for, for helping with this webinar. Uh, we're gonna record this and have it uh, available for you and your, your associates and others that aren't able to make it here today. And then we've got Jay Fisher, who is the president of the Great Plains uh, effort with L, L, oh my goodness, L and Q Great Plains LLC. And then we've got John Quackenboss, who is the president of the International L and Q International. So great group of people here today. Well, what we want to do is share a little bit of information about a, a product that's homegrown, that's an ag based product that we hope can be a tool, an arrow in the quiver, a tool in the toolbox, however we want to say it, another another item that we can put to use. So Jay, you've got a long history with North Dakota. Maybe you can give us a little background about uh, what you've done for the state, where you're at right now, and 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 then if we turn it over to John and, and let's help our our group understand what, what you've got to offer today. Jay, I'll turn it over to you. Good, thank you, Dale. And both John and I want to thank Dale and, and the group here, uh, the uh, Upper Great Plains Transportation Institute, uh, North Dakota State University, uh, and uh, NDLTAP. Um, we really appreciate you allowing us this time to give us, uh, again, as he said, the opportunity to use North Dakota product to help us fix the roads in North Dakota and, uh, and frankly, uh, anywhere in the world. Because in my growing up, they're either dust or they're mud or some days partway in between. Uh, my credentials first to start out with is uh, I was born and raised in, in Kidder County. Many of you have traveled the Interstate 94, and if you drive along and you see that Pettibone exit about in the middle of the state, if you actually took that exit, you would drive 19 miles of gravel to get to the high school that I went to that now is closed. Um, most all these rural communities, uh, uh, Dust and uh, Dale, if you want to put up the beginning of my PowerPoint there, uh, the, just the, the first slide and the two images there. On the left, you'll see uh, something really common to me and uh, on bo both sides there. And so uh, on the left, this uh, in this case is probably an oil truck, but that could be grain trucks, farm implements, uh, irrigated potatoes became commonplace in Kidder County. And so my mother couldn't hang her white sheets out on the, on the line anymore because of the dust. If you scroll down just a little bit there, uh, please, Dale, you'll see uh, uh, the, the next kind of scene. And, and that's our, our credentials, but down a little bit more. I, and uh, there's uh, on the left hand side there, you'll you'll see the, the mud and the, the kind of springtime roads that we saw. If you just scroll up, there you go. So either that dust up in the upper left or down below there is, is pretty darn common where I grew up. Um, as I said, uh, right on the uh, Kidder Stutzman County line and in, in, I own a little piece of land over in Chase Lake Township where nobody lives in the whole township. So as we know, we have miles and miles of these kinds of roads. At one point, uh, I think uh, Mr. Helms said that out in oil country where some of you guys are, as you know, it was costing us a million dollars a day when we couldn't get our product uh, out of there. So that's just oil. Now, I have a son that farms in the Sugar Beet area and Red River Valley, and so um, these kinds of roads are necessary for getting our, our ag commodities to market. And, uh, you know, I think the, the uh, National Automobile Association says that it, it costs about $2 billion a year in damage to vehicles. Two, one place, I think I saw three. And, you know, for trucks, and I don't need to tell you guys about getting these big rigs stuck or breaking axles and all of this. Uh, so uh, we hope, as uh, Dale said, we, we want to try to do better. So 
I have spent 37 and a half years working for North Dakota State University, developing uh, crops. I was an agronomist at the research center just south of Minot. About five years, well, five years and nine months ago, I left that position. And as I was leaving, I met a man named John Quackenboss. He called me because he believed that I knew some things about these crops and that, and road hard is made up of natural biopolymers, three different ones and in a blend that he's figured out of uh, North Dakota grown products that can be used. We think we're one of a kind to fix these kinds of situations. And so we have now introduced a new product. And if we scroll down a little bit, I'll show you what is a, a black five gallon pail. And this was just produced this what's in that uh, a week ago Friday. And um, we're, we're looking at a new marketing approach, if you would here. We're unveiling this um, product. We've uh, used it as, as John invented it and and we've had it on roads in Pennsylvania. In Arkansas and in Ohio. And it's working very well there. We're going to put some more out in Ohio. There's counties there that want some more of it. All my life in research, when we would do something in in the greenhouse or the laboratory, and then we'd bring it out to the research centers and small plots. The proof proof in the pudding was always when we got it out onto the farmers fields and we got some, you know, even like in some cases, new herbicides, fungicides, whatever. We could get that first two and a half gallon jug or five gallon pail out on the growers field to see how it really performed. So our biggest question so far has been, how does this stuff work and how will it work on my road? And this is what we're so hoping that you can help us um, solve that, answer that question. We know how it works uh, at the North Central Research Extension Center on uh, Williams loam soil. The soil scientist there put some in a small container, either 1000 or 1100 PSI in, the, in a tensiometer test with just plain Williams loam soil. We know it does better with gravel and a certain percentage clay, 2% of our road hard mixed and put on. But we want to get this out all across the state if we can. Then we will all know more next May, June, July, as we send this through the freezing cycle of what North Dakota roads can do. So that's what we're all about today. And uh, what we, we want to accomplish, we, we'd like your questions here. Um, I went off script. There's, there's um, many other things that I could tell you, but I'm talking to people who know and understand those two pictures, I think, about what we have. If we don't have dust, we have mud. And, and gravel preservation, gravel preservation is something that a term I've learned from you guys. And then, you know, NDDOT and uh, Vision Zero, you know, Vision Zero, and I know that that's safety. And, and safe roads are those without potholes, but you can't help but look in that upper left hand uh, dusty picture and you've driven in it, seen it, followed trucks and school buses and things, and it's that's not safe when you have roads like that. It causes uh, a negative effect on the grass and on the hay and our livestock performance and even on our crop performances. So in, as an agronomist, we studied that. We know it's costing us a lot of money, yeah, um, unhidden costs in fact. But but back to the basis here of, uh, if you roll, scroll down a little bit more, next slide, I guess, Dale. What we have inside this container is 20 pounds of the road hard material. That leaves us a little space at the top where we've put this one quart mixing container and uh, that's a, a folded over uh, orange bag. Um, and then on two things on the side, there's not one, but two um, samples of the additive and a little tiny spoon there that I've taped to the side. But those are the materials, everything you need uh, to, to make this road hard product. Um, the, the good thing about uh, this is uh, you, we use the very kind of material that the pothole it comes from, is made from the surrounding area. And when we blend that with our about 2% of this road hard and put it back into that same pothole, we can fix it very well. This uh, five gallon pail will do about 20, uh, 30 square feet of a four inch deep pothole. 
if you want to put it on as a small demonstration all in one one rectangle you could do that but we uh, our effectiveness and speed in in a per pothole is about 30 minutes 30 man minutes per per pothole and as you get better at this you can improve that so we think we're the only product on the market that's available to fix a pothole fix it early uh fix it right and so we want to see how this performs um, as we get to the next year i look at my clock down here and i see that it's, it's 10 minutes into this i've done all the talking so far um back up on the on the top slide there uh, uh, john quackenboss is my my partner um he he found me as somebody that knows he thought knew something about these products he has a long history uh he's a farmer a researcher a businessman uh, and been involved in a lot of things uh, he uh the farm in, is in arkansas near the tennessee uh, area uh, but he lives in alexandria virginia and he's a he can answer some of the questions as we move on here um and we have a a, a solution here and a method that we would like to get this this product i'm i'm now in riverdale north dakota i have uh, 150 of these five gallon pails there anxious for you guys to get some of them out i'm going to take them to some research centers too but we want if you would please help us uh get this out on the on the land yet this fall before freeze up and uh now i'll turn it to to john or back to dale or if you have questions of me at this point we i think this 30 minutes is going to go quickly but I, we want to answer your questions so, so john Jay, you, should i stop sharing and turn it over to john how about that yes yep that'd be great okay, okay there we go all right yeah, hey, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. And uh, I just to go back, you know, we are not the only pothole kit out on the market, but almost every, well, everything that I have found works with asphalt and emollient and things like this. We believe that we are the only pothole kit that is around for unsurfaced and gravel roads. And uh, that is where we've got 60,000 miles of, of that type of road in North Dakota alone. And, uh, you know, typically people end up filling it with, gra filling those holes with gravel, uh, but it washes out. The potholes continue to reoccur. Uh, I will tell you from experience with, uh, with using this methodology that we put out, uh, these potholes will hold up and uh, under under severe weather, under and and under you know severe traffic. Uh, so allow me to just explain very quickly uh, how one might go about you know fixing the pothole with this kit. You do have to bring some of your own tools, like your own shovel, for instance, in a five gallon bucket and such. But what we provide you with is as as Jay said, the 20 pounds of product and this polypropylene bag is a heavy duty mixing bag that you can put your soil in as well as mix the road hard in. Now, the reason that we went on and showed you the one quart mixing cup is because we have attached a decal to the side of it that interpolates the weight of the road hard. So once you, we also have a decal that will fit on a standard five gallon bucket that we all keep in our shops and such, but uh, that bucket uh, will also have a decal that is commensurate to the weight of the soil at 100 pounds, approximately 100 pounds per cubic foot of soil. And you can fill that out up in the field and rest assured that you're pretty close to the weight of the soil that you're, you're collecting and then figure out what 2% of that weight is and add that in road hard, put it in the bag, mix it up it's almost like shake and bake if any of you are old enough to remember those that you just shake the soil up with the road hard in it and you get a uniform distribution of the product and from there you can pour that into the hole uh, you would take just a little bit of the road hard and you'd coat the you'd coat the inside of the pothole so you've got 
the soil really adhering to the surroundings uh, and you'd pour it in, you'd actually go on and put a little bit more than you would think necessary because you're going to wet that with our solution uh, Jay was explaining and then you're going to mix it up so that you've got really the soil coming towards the maximum compaction density. You can do that with your shovel and then take a hand tamper and just tamp it on in and you're done at that point. You can, uh, if you're, you know, obviously we were thinking about how to make this more efficient for um, for road crews. And that would be as if you've got the same type of soil along a roadway, go ahead and collect 100 pounds or 150 pounds, however much dirt you think you need, however much soil you think you need, and then do a batch mixing at one spot and then carry that in your pickup truck to begin filling these potholes as you go down the road. And I think you'll find that uh, really <laughs> it is so much faster than anything you've tried before uh, that's going to go on and hold. I think you'll be very impressed. <clears throat> At the same time, you'll get to see how it works with that soil belonging to that specific road. And if you end up with washouts and places that are larger, you can either buy a 25 pound um, refill that we've got, or you can order in bulk, which is the best way to do a road and uh, actually put it out uh, for stabilizing the road or also for controlling dust. You can put down a one quarter inch deep application after scarifying the road and it does a magnificent job of controlling dust and holding the gravel down because the soil then grips around the gravel so you don't get gravel fling and you don't get gravel sink. Um, in a nutshell that's about it. I think we probably ought to open it up to questions don't you Dale? Yeah it sounds great. So audience if you want to unmute, unmute your mic and chime in that would be wonderful. I'll pause just a little bit. I've got a few questions, but we prefer if audience that stuff. Well, to get us started, so you've mentioned soil. Is this a soil and or gravel? Does it does it stabilize both? It does, it does. And you can go on and actually, if you want to deduct the amount of road hard that's necessary, uh, by the commensurate amount of gravel that you find in the road. So if you've got 50% gravel in your roadway, you could actually use 50% less of the road hard product and come out with a good result because you're treating the soil and not the gravel. Gotcha. Typically, uh, typically we find, you know, that these roads have maybe 30% or 40% gravel and such. Uh, that's fine. You can deduct a little bit of road hard for what you've got in gravel, but it works brilliantly with it. And the gravel helps to diffuse the weight. So it, uh, it really, I think it makes for a little better, a little better road when we've got the gravel in there than when, when we don't. So anybody chime in anytime you want to just unmute your mic. And yeah, Dale. Yeah. Uh, does it work yeah, with this wrap? is Jeff. Does, does it work with wrap? Does it so work Dennis, with Dennis grass? Nelson asked if it would work with wrap, the recycled asphalt yeah, payment. Oh yeah. Uh, I think I believe it will. I have not tried it with wrap before, but if you've got wrap that is mixed in with soil and you've got say a 50 percent soil content i believe it'll work fine with wrap okay thanks and jeff you were trying to ask a question yeah dennis dennis took that one away but uh that was my question also so what about a class 13 gravel so there you have your your 200s um, and some and your PI. So there you're saying you would add a quarter inch and scarify that in. That's just uh, uh, that that's for dust control now. Correct. On that. that's, that's what I'm that's what I'm uh, asking about is dust control. 
Yeah, and as long as your gravel is going to go on and seat itself in that quarter inch depth, you're you're good. On the other hand, if you have large pieces of gravel that are measuring anywhere between half an inch and one inch, and I we've we've actually had to take stones and such that have been in roads that have been two and a half inches in diameter and such. What we have done is uh, scarified to two inches or so to accommodate that, treated the soil, and then gone over and uh, and and compacted the road. And the uh, the stones will seat themselves down in the road, and the, and the uh, soil will cinch around those stones. So, uh, yeah, and for surface gravel, though, I think that uh, most of it's going to be taken care of by the quarter inch scarification. Okay, thank you. So, John, you you mentioned you're mentioning scarification. So, what form is the product that we're putting down? What do we put it down with? And and I'm. I'm thinking about a 24 foot wide roadway segment a quarter mile long. What can you paint that picture for me? I, well, if, if you're buying now, the pothole kit does not apply no. in that case, right? right. But right. what we are talking about is a powdered form and uh, that of, of product. And you are going to place that into a drop spreader. After you've scarified to the depth that you want, you're going to place that in a drop spreader and you're going to spread it out evenly and then scarify again or use a tiller to go on and get a uniform mix into your soil. Won't change color dramatically, remember, because you're only putting in 2% by weight of the soil. And then you're going to go ahead and use a water truck that has our additive in there, which you, you don't use very much, about 12 ounces for every 250 gallons of water. Uh, and you're going to spray that out onto the soil and then scarify or mix it in so that you've got a uniform moisture content and then compact with a roller compactor. And that, that that's really, it, it's that's there. Of course, Dale, if you've got to go on and recreate your crowns and things like that, you know, you would go about it in the same same way that you normally would. Thank you, John. And I, I didn't mean to confuse the situation. We definitely have the pothole kits here, and it's the same product for a, a real a real world project. The pothole kit is really allowing us to test this product this fall. So we have an over the winter. We, could you go into that a little more, Jay? Yes, that's exactly right. We we uh, actually were were forced or needed to put this. This stuff was produced at a food grade place. I just actually uh, took a little uh, off the top, and uh, it it tastes good. Um, <laughs> it, it, uh, <laughs> okay, now that's a first, Jay. I'm going to give and you that one. That that's how that's how safe this this product is, and so we think you know along uh, you know lakes and road beds are a lot of folks shouldn't have any problem with this stuff but yes this is a small demonstration we're hoping you know try it on your roads you ask great questions you know what would it work like with scoria what's it going to work on you know in in uh, my road what if i put it on a little deeper a little thicker and it, it's kind of like the lifts of asphalt it uh you know the thicker the the uh, the stronger and uh, you guys when you have a chance to get out with great big equipment and put it on and really pack it in uh, we're looking forward to those days that but this is a, a way to sample it so that we can chat in April and May and June and say how did that stuff work for you guys out in wherever you are then we don't want to handle five gallon pails uh, I, I'm still on crutches from an accident and these are either 20 or uh, or 25 pound we have different different sizes but we want to get into the to the big uh, super sack and or you know bulk to do large roads and and uh, as we get to that, but but you have to say this stuff works and it works well enough that we're going to use it here and here and here. Uh, you know the shoulders of roads as we farmers have our bigger equipment and every place you see where where either concrete or asphalt or chip and seal wherever that stops, you guys know that there's going to be a the next grade which is a mess. It's either it, it's a pothole. So, but we, we want to do big roads and uh, and use this North Dakota product and fix those very areas. 
I will say something that, you know, also for our farmers is when this stuff doesn't all make food grade, we have an alternate market for them then with these commodities. And that's so it's a win win for energy and agriculture and our farmers and our and the farm to market roads. It's all so that's what my hope as a North Dakotan is and and frankly anywhere in the states or all across the world. Um, yeah, long answer. Sorry. That, that was very helpful. So the small kit at, before we jumped on air, you were talking about a pothole as a test section, uh, as the edge of a roadway as a test section coming onto a bridge. And, and then you even mentioned like at a shop in front of an apron or something in the parking lot or, you know, where, where could it be put down? Because you started off proof is in the pudding and LTAP will always advocate for test sections so that we understand if it'll work in our area on our roads with our soils. Because John, you've got this in other places it's working, but you know, I'm like the rest of my colleagues, I, I need to prove it to myself. So that's what these small buckets are, are for. So we've, we do have a question in the chat box. So you've now stabilized your sub base soil. Do you need to cover that with gravel and how deep would it be so you're not disturbing it? Or can I just put a thin lift over? No, you can go on and use this on your sub base and you can go ahead and uh, and if it is covered with gravel, just go ahead and uh, uh, use use uh, an implement to go on and mix the gravel on in and then uh, mi mix it with road hard. What you won't have is uh, a gravel layer on top as you normally would hitting the bottom of your truck the whole time. It uh, It's going to be a, a smoother ride but you're going to have a sort of an aggregate look to the road that is that is basically been uh, compressed down into the bed all right and um, it's uh, it's as well it's as simple as that the, the product is uh, water resistant it will go on and absorb water so it's not going to shed water 100 percent but we have found that uh, after the the road dries out for just a short while in the sun it goes back to being as firm as it was i mean when and and and, and to give you an idea uh in a worst case scenario we had a road that was made of sandy loam and it had been underwater for two weeks because some culverts were stuck, plugged. We couldn't get to them. And so it sat underwater for two weeks. And after we finally were able to go on and clear those, of course, the, the road was soaking wet. We ran a uh, combine over it. It didn't make, uh, it, well, the treads went down about a half an inch into, the, into it. And... Uh, after the sun came out, uh, those treads were there and they were hard as rock. So, so you know, it didn't do very much at all to that road, even two weeks underwater. So uh, that's, I think that that's pretty much what we can expect. I have uh, seen uh, and obtained um, um, uh, 800 pounds of uh, 800 PSI and compression tests uh, used with, with clay with uh, soils that only had five percent clay and as jay was saying uh we typically get 1100 psi sometimes better when the soil content uh has more clay than that you know has is 10 20 percent and up and so uh, you're going to find it works beautifully with clay audience any any more questions yeah, this is Dennis County Highway. Is it priced by the square foot, square yard? What is, what's, what, how's it priced? Well, it's typically priced by the pound uh, when you're buying in bulk and, and uh, it's on the order of a dollar sixty plus freight per pound. In this case, the kit is one which, which by the time we got through with transportation and all these different things that had to be added in and such like this, uh, it got to be expensive. But we've got a special here where we hope you all can help us out a little bit uh, with a $50 cost for the entire kit. That's 20 pounds plus the plus what's in it uh, as well as uh, as well as uh, there's 
we, we check the freight on UPS. It's $25 pretty much anywhere in the Dakotas from from uh, Riverdale, where Jay is going to be uh, sending them out, out from. Okay, so if you're doing a dust control thing. Oh, yeah, sure. I can talk to that. Wide, yeah. You know, what's the cost of a 24? Yeah, it's uh, whatever. It, it's going to be depending on the gravel in the road and such. It's going to be anywhere between four and six cents a square foot, and it will last. I mean, I, I've seen uh, the product last in in excess of a year. We say thirty, sixty, ninety days, depending on the traffic, and it does really, of course, make a huge difference if you've got tractor trailers that are fully loaded running up and down the road all day. Uh, however, the product works, uh, it is long standing and it kind of gets a little bit of a refresher every time it rains. It sort of gains a new life there as a dust control too. Um, the product is absolutely non-corrosive, so you're not going to have any problems with the bottoms of your trucks. And uh, it's it's 100 percent safe. So your animals and livestock and such are, are not going to suffer. Uh, it holds the dust really well. And uh, Dale, I, we were talking about this in, in uh, last year where I think it was North Dakota that made a study on the uh, reduction in yield uh, going from the side of the road into the field by 80 feet and from the side of the road i think we were looking at a 50 percent reduction in yield so cutting your dust is pretty important and uh, this is uh, this is a great way to do it we've got another question and and maybe it leads into what uh, dustin's posted in the chat box so audience he's got the l and q international website up there and uh, John and Jay, if you've got information there you'd like to elaborate on in a second, that'd be great. Uh, the question in front of us is, do you have any results or, or feedback data from other states or counties? Uh, you know, I've got it from, you know, we've got, we've got verbal feedback coming in from Pennsylvania. We got verbal feedback coming in from utilities and such like that. But uh, most people are waiting and seeing how many years it's going to last or whatever if, uh, on this. We tell people that it will last two and three quarters years. And that is under some serious, serious, uh, uh, you know, freeze thaw cycles uh, with a lot of rain, 100 degrees during the summer. And uh, we think that uh, it can last as long as as uh, four years. Now that may not be for dust control, but when you do a two inch, two inch or better application into the soil, that's where we know we know it'll last two and three quarters years. Thank you. We have somebody, Nathan. Dale, it's Nathan Miller, Slope County. Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Welcome. Great. My question being, you know, with with pretty much every product, doesn't matter what it is, whether it be chlorides, whatever, eventually it is going to, the surface is going to wear out and you're going to have to reshape. Now, my question is how water soluble, what's, how how hard is it going to be to, to, to dig this back up and reshape a road once it's been worn down? Oh, you can take a disc and you, you know, an old heavy disc and uh, run down the road and break it up. And as soon as you've broken up the surface and exposed it and such, uh, it goes on and uh, and breaks down pretty quickly, so you, you won't have, have any add, problem with it. Would you have to add more product to help break it down to revitalize it, or is it kind of? I mean, it, what what's going to be the easiest way? Because even even with chloride, your road gets quite hard, and I mean, it's it's more advantageous to use something like a stinger type bit on your grader to even to dig that up because it just it just gets harder. Yeah, I, I would say that if you uh, were to redo it, uh, we tell people just uh, go go into your top two inches and rip it 
uh, and at the same, at the, get it get it as pulverized as possible. Uh, add in some more product and go through the same process. Okay, thank you. Certainly. Good and and John John and Jay, just so you know, the question that Nathan's asking is since most of our topical applications are calcium or mag, they're pretty easy. You you wet, you rework, you sometimes add a little little more product, sometimes it heals itself. So they're pretty easy. So that's the comparative that really we're asking. Okay, Dale, uh, I would say also that uh, this is uh, an important, it, it would be important to try uh, the product out with magnesium chloride and calcium chloride already having been down because the salts mm -hmm. may go on and affect it. And you want to know what, you know, you want to know if that's going to happen. So another good reason to run a five gallon bucket rather than a quarter mile test section. We'll know if our soils and those salts are, are reactive or if they're complementary. Good idea. Right. Yes, we really want some more testing. That's, you know, in locations and in, in your soils, your roads, uh, we know how, how they vary from, from all across our state and even township to township. So if we can get it out there and see what it's like next spring and and, and various depths too, it's going to happen. Um, and that's what we want. We know how the thinner, the cheaper, the, the, the thicker, the more costly, but the longer it should last for, for bigger, heavier road uh, construction and oil field and sugar beet trucks and grain trucks and so. So it's, it's, it's important, you know, it's impossible to test all the soils there. I think there's 17,000 types in the world. But uh, we, it's worked, this product has worked on everything that we have tried except for 100% sand. So if you've got an area that is super, super sandy, almost like beach sand, for instance, uh, it, will, it will firm it up for a little while, but it does not hold. So don't, don't do that. Good advice. Nothing works everywhere. Right. Let's figure out <laughs> the limitations. Right. That's right. That's right. This works yeah, the most, though. It's it's pretty friendly. We can stay and answer questions as long as folks want to stay here. But we we do have a program, and uh, we'll we'll put some more information up and get it out to these to these folks here on how they can uh, get, get the five gallon pail as soon as we can can get it to you and uh, try it out. Um, yeah, and there's more uh, our website and so forth. There's there's demonstrations on uh, on the L and Q uh, website um, and other uh, other things that we can answer for you. I hope in the in the future. And the L and Q website is that the best way for the attendees to reach out to you? How would you prefer? Yeah, then well they they can uh, write us directly. Uh, or they can go ahead and and jump on and uh, at the end it'll say info at L and Q that comes to us will respond immediately. Uh, there's a store there that uh, people can buy the, the products with. Uh, there are also some fairly uh, detailed sections on applying the product. There are links into films uh, and uh, on, on the home page, if you scroll down, you'll see links into both uh, Roadheart and Terrazyme. Um, and uh, if, if there are any other, if, you know, if there are any questions, you all feel free to call at any time. I'll just give you my cell number uh, now, which is 703-395-0421. And uh, I'd be happy to take your call at any time. 703-395-0421. And Jay, I can't remember yours. Mine is 701. 500-5726. And L and Q Great Plains and L and Q we're linked together and uh, with associated businesses and uh, we'll we we'd love to get back to you and love to get you some product out there the, before the ground freezes up and get it on before Halloween or whenever. <laughs> Wonderful. So I, Jay, I think you had a nice comment that we'd be willing to stay on longer. To be respective of everybody's time, we promise to go a half hour. We're at that time. Uh, some wrap uh, wrap up closing comments. Jay, I'll, I'll turn it over to you first for closing comments. 
Well, I want to just thank you, Dale, again, and you and your whole organization for the network that you have. And uh, we appreciate, we we hope and think that we have a, a solution. Um, so we want to get this product out to to really, the uh, as I said earlier on here, the, we, we would know a lot by next uh, next spring, the more of you folks can get some of this out there. This is, you know, the advanced testing phase before we ever released a, a wheat variety or anything else in, uh, you know, all of North Dakota State University. Why we wanted as much data as we could get. So um, we, we I thank you in advance and I thank you, uh, Dale, again, all you guys and for your time. You're busy. It's a pretty nice day yet and uh, fall is here. So we thank you and appreciate all of you. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Dale. Dale. Yeah, to, Jay, I'm so impressed by over 37 years with the extension service and the work that you did there and the testing of products that your your models continues here. So we we look forward to to seeing what you do find out. John, closing comments. Uh, no, I just, we appreciate everybody's time. Uh, I think that, uh, that e talking about time, I think you're going to find, as I said, this is, a, this is an efficient model to fix these potholes with. And if you do a batch job, you might even just go on. And if you've got three or four crews that are out there, you know, give each one uh, the, the, uh, a bucket to put in their pickup truck and uh, spare some of these drivers broken axles for the <laughs> for the winter. Yeah, sounds good. Let's get some test sections out. And Jay, John, as you're collecting data, the LTAP team would love to hear the results and, and keep our our customers, our, our county leads, our tribal, our, our township lead leads uh, posted on on where we're at. Again, okay. this is an ag based product yeah. that's uh, uh, we want to see where it might go. Oh, it might be a tool in the toolbox. So glad to have everybody here today. Thank you very much, Jay, John. Thank you, Dustin, in the background. As always, you do such a stellar job. This will be recorded, and uh, L, L and Q and our LTAP team will be putting it on the on the web for you to look at later. With that audience, uh, oh wait, wait, we have Thank Dennis. You folks. We appreciate your time. And and as as we close out, we'll stay on a little bit. So further questions, yeah. uh, please join us. Thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, is it uh, temperature sensitive? Uh, it will go through, you know, there is no temperature sensitivity that I know of. I mean, it <clears throat> it's not pleasant to be working with water and soil uh, when it gets under 50 degrees. Your hands start getting very cold, but uh, oh, it, well, other than that. North Dakota, we're used to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very seldom gets above 50 degrees, so that's why we're Good asking <laughs> <laughs> 30, 32 and a half degrees there. Dad. there yeah. Okay. yeah. And then uh, shelf life. Shelf life, we go on and say it's two years, uh, but it, we've sealed this in this bucket. Uh, that is, yeah, I don't think you're going to find that it goes bad even after four. Okay. I guess maybe uh, the powder, of course, you put that on, that doesn't have a shelf life. But the liquid that we're going to add to the water truck, does it have a shelf life? Jay? That, that, oh. the, the, that, com, that comes as a, as a granule, uh, I don't know if you can product this is, uh, and so you just mix uh, a little bit of that, as, as John said, I think it's 12 ounces per what, 200, 250 gallons of water. So, you know, that has a, um, we, we put a desiccant in there because it's, you know, like even sugar will, will cake up in your in your sugar bowl. But so but that and that's uh, you, you can purchase that uh, relatively inexpensively. And so you don't need the you just mix that up at the time at which you need it. So that's okay. uh, that's a small quantity thing. Nor on the uh, the bulk. I'm going to say powder. Okay. I'm sorry, I missed the first. So there really isn't any shelf life on any of the products. There, you know, I would say that uh, if you if you are going to expose the product to a lot of moisture, uh, it's going to go on and begin to cake on you. And uh, it uh, it also, like any uh, natural uh, bio product, it's going to start to stink. 
after a while. So okay. what you want to do is keep it dry and keep that lid on if you're not using it. And it should last for a long time. Uh, we would typically say two, two years on the uh, MSD sheet, you know, um, but it's, uh, we, I've seen the, I've, I've had product last just fine in those buckets for four years. Okay. And then as far as shipping of the, of the bulk, um, first step powder, how do you, does it come in totes or does it come in a grain truck? What's it, how do you, how, how's the shipping? We, we would like to do super sacks if, if we, if we can, you know, we're, it, once we get to uh, bigger quantities, you know, I think like you you see any kind of a, a factory how they can handle it. But you know, many people are pretty used to these uh, plastic bins and or super sacks. You'll see you know seed of all kind and uh, going up and down the road. Um, th that we can handle that with a with a forklift, a, a heavy duty bobcat, as long as it's got enough tail weight to it. But uh, yeah, that's the way a lot of farmers are handling a lot of different kinds of products now, so they're used to it. If, if so, that would certainly be our next intermediate step that that uh, both our product manufacturers, blenders want to do, and that'll bring the cost down too. I mean, look, we're this is table grade stuff in a food place that we had to get this this produced, and they were backed up. Shortage of labor, shortage of plastic buckets and lids. You wouldn't believe the, you know, this supply chain here. Uh, so <laughs> we had to jump uh, through some hoops on this. Uh, I, I will tell you that uh, from an application point of view, the super sack is by far the most convenient for you because what's going to happen is you're going to be out on the road and you have to go on and load the product into a drop spreader. That you're going to want to move those super sacks to different areas on the road and you're going to pick them up with a set of forks, right? That are going to be on a tractor or whatever to get it high enough so that the neck at the bottom of the super sack comes on down and you're going to fill your, uh, your, your drop spreader that way. And so we tend to try not to go over a thousand pounds or 1300 pounds on a super sack because certain uh, lifts aren't high enough to take care of the larger super sacks, but almost everything is able to lift up a thousand pounds. And so we're, we're going to basically try and, uh, and keep it at a thousand pounds and that way everybody's equipment will work. Okay. And then I, I, I maybe I missed it, but roughly how many pounds per mile do you put on? Depends at, on at, the depth of the depth of the application and it depends on the amount of gravel that you're going into. Now on two inches at zero gravel, 100% soil, right? Well, let, let's just do one inch. Let's do one inch, it's an easy multiplier. 0% gravel, one inch deep is going to be 0.16 pounds per square foot. Okay. Okay, I'm writing. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Now, Dennis, you're, you're good. If you're going to awesome. go on and go into, say, a 50% gravel situation, you can go on down to 0 0.08. If you don't feel comfortable with that, or the gravel's changing, uh, gravel consistency isn't quite, you know, uniform throughout. Go 0 0.10. Uh, and uh, and you'll probably be all right on that. All right. I'll shut up. Let somebody else jump in. <laughs> those so those are really awesome. good. Th those are really good questions because we d John did a whole calculation for a road. They told him it was 20 feet. And then we sent him numbers and they said, oh, no, our road is 15 feet. So this was in another, as you said, we Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania. Right now we're working with Ohio. They want uh, they want some more. Um, and then earlier on, some of the questions were they actually on a seven to 10% grade put some kind of large stones in there to, to push in for traction for how many ton vehicles were they sending up that to put up a big it, power line, John? It was a hundred ton vehicles, hundred ton vehicles. 
with big generators on the back. Yeah. So so we were nervous ner nervous about them doing something different with the surface of our product to that that dr dramatic. And so we uh, again, the more we can get out in various under different situations and and you then we start sharing with each other. We'll we'll know a lot by by spring. So okay. that's uh, I, if you, I'm kind of like Colombo. I've got one more question. Just one yes, more. sir. Uh, how's it respond to snow and ice and rain? Does it get slippery on top? No, does no, it does not go on and, and get any slipperier than uh, than you you'd normally find. Uh, it, it goes on and uh, I, you know, I've seen it so that it's got ice and stuff formed on the top, uh, but uh, I, I can't really say that it goes on and helps repel the ice off of it. I just don't know. Uh, I, it's always it, it looks more sorry. like um, you know some of these other products when they get wet. When you get a little, you know, we get 17 drops a year in water. The way things are going. But if it gets a little bit of rain on it, does it get slimy? No. It still have a bite? No, it does not. No, no. It you won't be bite. able to really tell the difference that it's been. You won't be able to tell the difference that it's actually been added to the soil because there's only 2% of it in there. On the surface, uh, it... Uh, you know, it just does not give you a slimy, slimy feel um, at all. Uh, it resists, uh, like I say, it resists falling apart in the in the weather. It's got what we did was we we worked on these different proteins, uh, and one of them lends a hydrophobic type of uh, quality to the soil, and then one of them has some expansion to it. And uh, and the other one is a hardening uh, is a, a sort of a protein that's in there. And so you've got the, the combination of the three. And when you end up with uh, a really cold, cold night, for instance, and then it heats up uh, during the day, you've got this expansion and contraction that's going, that particular piece of ground will expand and contract uh really nicely does not crack or anything else you'll find that uh you you'll be you'll be kind of shocked that it's it's holding together like that uh so well going through the the different phases of temperature okay thanks it's like the thanks flying tank it does everything right <laughs> <laughs> Teasing. <laughs> Thank you for the questions. They're good questions. Yeah. Um, I guess that that was, yeah, that's all that I, I was going to say. And, and Sat Paul, you had the question on other data. Definitely look at their website and there's another recording so you can find out more information. This, will, this webinar was an abbreviated session to just uh, see if the pothole patch kit could be disseminated. And so we didn't include a whole lot of information. So definitely, Sat Paul, I know you'll want to look at, at that site. Sure. Thank you, Dale. Mm -hmm. If you fellows are interested in doing a larger application, all you have to do is just write Dale, I write uh, uh, Jay or myself, and uh, we'll actually do a separate. Uh, video conference presentation and answer all your questions separately for you. We're happy to do that. Sounds good. And I and I have some other uh, uh, 96 uh, pails of uh, simply 25 pounds of product per. So if you want to do a little more and you don't need to, you know, some of the other measuring things like that way, um, we have some of those made up too. That's what we were able to do with the run that we could get scheduled. Um, at our at our factory this uh, uh, later than we'd hoped, but <laughs> we already covered that. So mm -hmm. we have that that product too. So yeah, get in touch with John or me or both, and we'd happy to to do this, uh, answer your questions, and uh, have you help answer uh, how it works. All right. Well, ag again, I'm going to say a big thank you to Jay, John, Dustin in the background for sharing some information here. 
sure hope we get some test sections. I love the way you you've looked at stuff at NDSU and uh, let's let's see how that works here. If we can get another North Dakota Ag product to be part of our solution for gravel preservation, it's a win for us all. So participants and everyone, thank you very much for attending today. I hope you okay. learned. And again, thank you, Jay and John. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good day Fantastic. now. Yep. Yeah.